Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome to Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, the newest Borderlands spin-off to grace our PC. We have showcased nearly every Borderlands game over the years, and this one is going to be no different. Planning on playing through the entirety of the campaign and editing it down into bite-sized pieces for you guys to enjoy every single day day at least that's the plan for now as you can see i have made a character poked around with the game a little bit and managed to get to level 10 but we're going to be starting a new character and very quickly passing any progress i have done in the past there is a world beyond the borderlands a world forged by wonder and ruled by fate. The battle between these powers has raged since the beginning. Evil and good. Villains and heroes. A vicious cycle endlessly repeated. Wonder is the power of a cruel, unpredictable god. But fate... There's one alone who can wield fate. One alone whose story is in their own hands. The Fate Maker. That's you. Heavy, right? Fate Maker. Big responsibility. Honestly, I wouldn't even blame you if you just laid down in a puddle and gave up. <clears throat> but if not, if you try and prove yourself as Fate Maker, then heed the warning I give all heroes. Together you fight. Together you shall fall. Uh, ha! Critical hit! The undead fall beneath our blade! Ah! Oh yeah! Same! It's going real good over here, blade-wise. We're coming for you, Dragon Lord. <laughs> Fools, your party of heroes can't stop me. Already I... Wow, you guys got here fast. <laughs> like you said, we're the heroes. I am Valentine, gallant adventurer. The scary stabby one is Fred. What about that one? That's the newbie. It's their first adventure. Oh, come on. Their figure isn't even fully painted. Enough talk! We're here to stop you from taking the soul energy! Fools! I've already absorbed all of the soul energy! I'm invincible! Oh, man. Sorry, newbie. We missed the soul energy. Castles will burn! Babies will cry! More than usual! My skeleton armies will wash over the land! <laughs> Looking bad. How do we win this? We attack together. Pathetic. Especially you, newbie. They don't make heroes like they used to. Time to die. But then, just as the heroes lose hope. They hear a name. A name? Yeah, and also like, you know, like a sparkly rainbow, which goes like, crinkle, cr -cr 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 -cr! It is Queen Buttstack. The most beautiful and perfectest ruler in all the land. Hold on, what game are we playing here? We're, We're playing, playing Bunkers and Badasses, baby! And I, Tiny Tina, am the Bunker Master. So what I say goes! And I say there's a magical diamond buying a corn named Butt Stallion who saves the day! Oh. I was kind of hoping we would save the day. You will, Valley Girl. I just gotta set the stakes. Now, let's table talk. Cue Dragon Lord! Butt Stallion! You may be the most beautifulest, perfectest ruler in all the land, but this time, I've won! Fred? Bud Stallion was wielding the coolest sword in the whole world? The Sword of Zoom! 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 
Oh, would you? I just made those skeletons. No! Uh, uh, no! I curse you, Valentine! I curse you, Fret! And most of all, I curse you, newbie! Whatever your name is, I will return and finally rid this world of heroes! And with that, the Dragon Lord was defeated! For now. Explosion complete! Who's ready to rigidity role play? Yeah, might as well. We're stranded here after that mountain totally jumped out at our ship. <laughs> yeah, he crashed it. I'm in. I love bunkers and badasses. I've already got a level 40 character. Now, 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 we are making all new characters. This is the newbie's first game, and I'm gonna make sure it's an adventure they'll never forget. You ready, newbie? Time for character sheets, baby! And I think that sets the tone for the game quite well. From this point, we are going to be making our character, and there are a few different classes to choose from. We have the Stabomancer, a sneaky murderer that focuses on critical hits. The Clawbringer, who is a wyvern tamer with a focus on fire and lightning damage. The Spell Shot, a magic user with a focus on constantly casting spells. The Graveborn, a soul trapper with a focus on dealing damage in exchange for his health. The Spore Warden, a fungal friend with focus on ranged damage. And the Berserker, an angry smasher with a focus on frost damage. There seem to be a, a, a pretty wide array of character archetypes that we can play. I think I'm going to play as a spell shot. The other character I was playing as is a Clawbringer, and I really like it. Maybe I'll show that character off to you guys at some point. But for now, we'll start with this. Casting a spell or reloading grants the Fate Maker a stack of spell weaving, increasing spell damage. You should know that spells in this game are basically fancy grenades from other Borderlands titles. So we're going to be able to throw these around quite well. And now, it's time to customize our character. There we go, he's looking pretty good. There's actually quite a few sliders and different things you can do, but this is our orcish spellcaster. Next, we're going, or a spell shot, excuse me, that's why the game made me go back. Uh, we then get to pick uh, a set of cards that just kind of influence our starting stats. I think I'm gonna start with Failed Monk. Now, I believe this can be changed at any point, but Failed Monk is going to boost our intelligence as well as our wisdom scores, meaning that we should be able to do a lot of spell casting, which is a pretty important part of my class, but also deal a significant amount of status damage. So let's see if we can get both of these up to 20. No, I can't, but I can get them both to 18. Now that does leave our constitution pretty low, meaning we will be susceptible to a lot of damage. And maybe attunement is something that I might want to do in the future. But for now, I'm feeling pretty okay. Our name will be Gary the spell shot and let our game begin time's up okay uh valentine you've just drawn your own face over the character sheet yep it said draw your hero and i'm my own hero okay. <laughs> and fret it says your starter sword does murder a thousand damage that's a lot i left off a zero okay no plan fret and valentine can't be trusted with pencils let alone dice so it is up to you, newbie. You are the fate maker. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And these fools shall be thine advisors, I guess. Fine. I advise that you better be a badass. We're here to slay evil and get gold. I'll share Why some don't gold. You see me as a role model. Follow my lead, and you'll be a great fate maker. All right, one last thing. Bunkers and badasses is a role playing game, baby. That means you do not. Great character voice. Kapiski? Break me off a piece of that. I'm looking to find some coin. If I happen to save the world while I'm at it, 
So be it. Mmm, mmm, tasty. Now, prepare to enter a world of fantasy. Uh, I don't see anything. You gotta imagine it, knucklehead. Just close your eyes and wonder. You have arrived in the snoring valley, an unassuming and peaceful corner of the queen <clears throat> that harbors a dark secret. But You journeyed far to be here, heeding the call of the queen herself. <gasps> the queen herself? What could she want of us? She fears the Dragon Lord will soon reawaken. You must find his tomb and prevent his resurrection. What I'm hearing is we get to whoop his ass. Uh, here's a little cheat sheet to track your health and map and stuff. Of. <laughs> you get your UI. That's the cheat sheet. Okay. So this is the beginning of our grand adventure. All of this taking place inside the theater of the mind around a... Bunkers and Badasses table. Not too dissimilar from a Dungeons and Dragons table. Now, of course, this being Borderlands, there are plenty of places along our path where we can try to adventure out and gather some loot. Some of this will just be gold that we can put directly into our pockets for later, but we will also find ammo and potentially some weapons along the way. The normal massive amount of Borderlands weapons is here, but with a, <laughs> a pretty funny twist. For now, we are simply following the clopping road. towards our destination. But it does look like the bridge is out up ahead. It seems to call to you. The queen's magic enters you through the stone, granting you the power of... You now have magical sight and hearing, baby. Queen Butt Stallion, she's guiding us on our quest. Sure, a fallen tree bars your path. What you gonna do about it, huh? Jump over it. Identify tree. <laughs> it's a species called Jumpus tutorialis. Oh. Apparently, it only grows in this one valley. Jumpus tutorialis. I think I understand. Another stone. And more and tracks to follow. The glint of edge steel beckons you forward. Some hot lumberjane has left her axe in a stump. So this is where we can see the stats of the weapon prior to picking it up. For most of what we're doing, item score is going to be one of the most important stats for us to look at. So this melee weapon has 34 item score, 18 damage, and attack speed of 1.3 a second, critical chance of 11%, and critical damage of 102%. Nice piece of steel, huh? I love a good axe. Great for cleaving, hacking, even a good old-fashioned chop. Though the magical hook prints continue through the cave. The rocky ceiling dips low to the ground. Whatever shall I do? The maker knows when to stand tall and when to crouch. When to crouch. Now's the time, the time I was talking about. It's crouching time! <laughs> yeah, work them sweet glutes. And if you get a running start and crouch, you'll slide around like a cool action hero. So there are a lot of really noteworthy voice actors in this game, too. Uh, Andy Samberg is one of the companions at the table. We also have Wanda Sykes at the table. Of course, Tiny Tina being played by Ashley Birch. And I believe my character is Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Unfortunately, I don't know his name. I feel bad about that. But it makes me happy every time I hear him. We, we could have picked between a few different voices, and I just landed on this one. Really, really Another pleased with it. Another waystone guides your path, but reaching it will mean going through a pack of Nasty, pinchy crabs. No! Yeah. Combat! Kill them all! Luckily, we have a melee pinchy, weapon for that. Pinchy. Combat this early in the game is pretty straightforward. Uh, you see an enemy and you hit it. You and <laughs> let's be honest, it's kind of going to play out that way for a while. Borderlands just kind of throws enemies at you. Carrying their life savings for some reason. All yours now. Oh, nice. We got their life savings. I think we killed everything down here. Climb up there! Climbing already. And we are going to continue to follow Butt Stallion's footsteps through the hills. Actually getting pretty close to what looks like where you would learn dragon words in Skyrim. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
That's right. The queen has ruled the Wonderland since I was but a humble player, like you, Bing Bongs. She has foreseen your arrival and left a powerful weapon for you. The weapon of a fate maker. Ooh. It's a pistol with a crossbow attachment on the front of it. It's a gun! This thing's off rust, but it'll still put holes in someone. Wait, there's guns in fantasy? Guaranteed <laughs> is fantasy, baby! Oh, platform's raising. We got back on it. The shrine floor rises beneath you. From here, you can spy a quaint little village nestled in the bodacious bosom of the valley. But beyond it, a dark and ancient castle lurks. Lurkingly. Where? But the Dragon Lord is here. He'll be in that castle. Oh, that castle? All right. We can switch our firing mode. We have a two-shot burst, which let me show you the projectiles on this thing. They are little bolts with some magic energy with it. There is some drop with them, so you do have to aim above your target sometimes. But we could switch our firing mode to be a four-shot burst instead. This would be like if we're up close to an enemy and we're trying to burst them down. You will never reach the dark master. Are you sure? I'm feeling pretty confident. Scary man ambush! Go break some bones, fate maker. I don't think that'll be a problem at all with our four-shot burst. For the week. They have some ranged targets shooting some arrows at us as well. Now, if we aim for a head, I believe a headshot is going to be guaranteed crits no matter what. But if we increase our dexterity on our character sheet, our chance for just crits all of the time does go up. So something to keep in mind. If you're very accurate, maybe crit chance isn't as valuable to you. Just something to think about. Holy crap, they might reach the Dark Master. I think I might make it, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. He's talking about. There's a loot chest up on that tower. Get them loops. I am Ribula, faithful servant to the Dragon Lord. <clears throat> Tell me where his tomb is, or I'll make you a skeleton too. I don't know. I swear it on the Queen's diamond tail. <laughs> Lies. You are soaked in skeleton. Spread out, my undead <clears throat> hordes. We must find the master. A big part of Borderlands games is scaling the environment. That's why they put this loot chest on top of this building. You need to start getting used to looking around, seeing the sights. There's also a lot of hidden collectibles, and uh, they usually hide that in very difficult to reach places. So this is just the beginning of learning how to scale buildings. Inside of this chest, we see a ward, this game's version of a shield. This has a 77 capacity. If we stop taking damage for five seconds, it will start to recharge, and it has a recharge rate of 13 shielding per second. Ooh, you found a ward. That's like a magical shield above your health. Pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, we might be able to get over there too. Hold on. <laughs> I oh, no, don't fall off. We can kind of grab onto ledges, which is a really nice addition. Yeah, I don't think I can make that. So it does make exploring quite a lot more enjoyable. We're ruined. All is lost. Very heroic. Tina, can we blow up the rocks? Sorry, it's impossible. Without explosives! Oh! Victory! I'd never lost hope. <laughs> kind of an anticlimactic <laughs> explosion. Fire and the clackety clackety <clears throat> of bones! We're here to save the village! These are our respawn checkpoints. They are, in the normal game, made by Hyperion. And you get kind of beamed in from space every time you die. This time they have a really nice Grim Reaper topper to them. I like it. The village is already ransacked and crawling with skilly men. We're here to avenge the village. That skeleton was missing his head. That makes it a little more difficult to hit headshots. It looks like if we hit these guys in the face, their, their head actually falls off sometimes. The archers may be a little different because they need to be able to see their target, but those small little warrior grunts, we take them down no problem. Actually, a lot of reinforcements coming in on the right side of town here. These explosive barrels, we can use those to deal some elemental damage around them. 
hitting that skeleton for 63 ice damage. Now, ice damage, for whatever reason, is actually really strong versus these skeletons. Oh, and we get to see our very first badass. Is he throwing? Oh, no, it's like a sunder attack he was sending towards me. So we know their faces can be knocked off. Can we, like, take out a leg here or anything? Doesn't quite look like it. Luckily for us, this badass is pretty slow. Let's turn on four-shot burst. <laughs> Get those easy headshots when he stops standing, or when he stops moving. Action skill unlocked. Okay, I can teach you guys all about this. This is our G skill. Might as well save her peasant ass. Her peasant ass. So, if we aren't too worried about the elemental type of damage that we're dealing, uh, easy way to play through the game is this melee weapon has a higher item score, a 44, compared to our 34. So, we're just going to pick that up. Later, there's a lot more nuance that you have to pay attention to, but this should get us going pretty well. Also, something for you Borderlands nerds like me, the manufacturers of weapons are still here. This is a Dowl submachine gun, but to make it a little more fantasy-like, it's a Dahlia submachine gun. <laughs> we'll go ahead and equip that instead of our crossbow. It should get the job done pretty well. One thing I think is really funny about this game is that sometimes they try to make weapons very... Uh, appropriate for the tone. And then sometimes they just have an SMG. <laughs> I actually thought this had a little engraving on the front of it. Now it's just a totally normal SMG with a laser hollow sight. Nothing to see here. This is one of the collectibles that we can find as we're playing through the game, a 20-sided dice. If you listen really closely, you might be able to hear a little jingle. It sounds like glitter falling. Well, if we interact with that, we're told that there are four in this area. And, ooh, that's a pistol upgrade. Yeah, we take those. We take that. And uh, I, these roll a number every time. I don't know if we get more stuff if we roll a high number. But those are worth looking out for just to get some good loot infusions. Now, if we hit tab, we are able to level up our skills located over here. We have the option of getting the spell sniper the magic bullets or the prestidigitation. Oh, that's really cool, actually. So our class ability is going to be polymorph, and that's just equipped right away. I think I am also going to try to get our increased spell damage here as well. Not only do we have a talent tree to spend points in, but we also have hero stats that we can allocate, just like when we were on the character creation. And I feel like spell cooldown is probably going to be pretty good for us. And one of the most important stats that I am going to try to funnel points into. We have a bonus quest. If you look on the right side, right under bunkers and badasses, we have to revive the peasants, peasant ass, which is right over there. But we get a bonus if we cast our spell. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anyone to cast my spell on, but just doing that was enough to get my credit. Hey, get back up. You'll be okay. Thank you for saving my peasant ass, stranger. How can I ever repay you? Free of charge. I'm looking for the Dragon Lord. You're a fate maker. I knew the Queen would send us a hero. The tomb is in the crypt below Castle Herofast. You must hurry before his minions find it. The tomb is inside a crypt. The perfect hiding place. May the Queen's favor see your noble quest through. Now, we do have subtitles turned on. Unfortunately, I can me. I cannot boost voice volume at all. This is at 100% with dialogue maxed. That's it. That's what we got. Unfortunately, I wish they were a little louder. Uh, sometimes when my character speaks, they can be totally overpowering, and then NPCs like that come in a little quiet. Luckily, we do have subtitles turned on for you guys. Let's kick open this door! And head towards the ruins. Castle Herofast are just out yonder. Which is fantasy for saying. It's over there, baby. Alright, let's try polymorph. His tomb is somewhere beneath these ruins. Find him, fellow skeletons! Now, if I had a grenade, 
the dragon. I'm pretty sure we would get a free grenade cast there. Once we clear out these skeletons, we're going to be making our way inside of this castle. Actually, we can just start to run over there right now. Our polymorph does have a bit of a cooldown. And once we get grenades, we're going to be firing off spells to hit these guys. But it is great crowd control for the time being. If we ever see a badass enemy plowing towards us, using our polymorph on that target, allowing us to have more time to just figure out what we want to do, might be pretty valuable. This weapon has full auto or burst firing. Burst firing, a little more controlled, but not really something I'm looking for. So they're going to be skeletons. Skeletons. Yes. If they're not living, they have to be undead. Those are the rules of, the, of every video game ever made. Now, this guy moving up does have a shield that's blocking some of my incoming projectiles. But if we just shoot around that shield, he's going to take damage, no problem. I don't think we have to kill all of these skeletons, and I just lost all of my shielding, so I'm going to continue to push in. Ammo starting to get a little low with our SMG. That's why it's important to always bring two different gun types. We could swap out to our pistol if we need to. Something to pay attention to if you've never played Borderlands Ooh, games before. What's that scrawled upon yonder parchment? Yet another collectible. Surely the author would be glad to see its safe return. Embers in the heart. Coats laying at the door, wine set for the guests. Poor, poor. There's more poem where that came from. Just talk to the poet in the Bright Hoof Tavern. When you got yeah. more than one gun, you can switch between them. Keeps combat spicy, like jambalaya. Oh, here we go. We got a weapon chest. Maybe after this quest, I could be the bunker master. I've been working on a campaign. It's got orcs and kissing. Ooh. <laughs> We also have another dice up there on the ledge. I'm actually thinking about making some companion videos for this series where we just get some collectibles. But before we talk about that, we got a new SMG that shoots ice damage at our foes. As you can see, ice super effective against skeletons. And I really love the design of this weapon. I've run into a few of these while I've been, your weapon's just hanging out in the sky. I've run into a few of these while I've been playing and they are super duper effective. The longer you hold down the fire though, watch what happens. Well, actually, this weapon may not have a high enough capacity for that to even matter. But under sustained fire, these ice weapons slowly, they slow down quite a bit. Their fire rate really starts to tank if you hold down that full auto. I saw another weapon like this that was shooting a laser at enemies as well, which it's just super satisfying. You love to see it. You don't even have to aim. It literally just homes onto the enemies. Well, easy jump quest gets us up to a dice, and we roll a seven. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Who's this guy? Just normal skeleton? Another thing we can do is if we ever have an archer that's way off in the back and we're worried we can't deal with him, that's a super duper easy polymorph target. Throne, her bones clutching a dusty spell book. As oh no, a destiny that never came. Well, this place is super grim. I love it. Grab that spell book. Now, this is where I think our class is going to start to come online. Magic, that's the stuff. With a spell book equipped, you can cast the frost spell contained within. Watch this. I spent magic I missile. They got none of that. Now, if I polymorph this guy, How do we, get into the tomb crypt? we got a free we got magic missile. Somewhere. It's hidden. Uh, it's hidden. Drop the chandelier. Oh, do I have to get up there? Hold on. 
That should be an easy jump. Right over this rail, and then we will melee the rope. Which opens up the middle of the floor for us to proceed. If I don't grab onto the ledge above me. Whoa! As you hurtle down into the depths beneath the castle. It smells of old stone and older secrets. Oh, now this is the part of the tutorial where we learn a little bit about some of the dungeons that we might encounter in the future. I've only been to one other, but this is a good tutorial for traps. So right in the middle of the walkway here, what do we see? A big pressure plate. If we stand on this, it triggers that trap there. Now, even if we were running at full speed, I don't think that trap would hit us. Yeah, one projectile might clip you. If you step on this one, it triggers another trap up ahead in the walkway. Same kind of thing. We're probably not in any danger there, but they're, we're, they're just letting us know traps exist. Sucks. My servants suck. And prophecies? I spit upon prophecies. <clears throat> that was me spitting. Because they suck. For six generations, my family has cl you hear a rumble and a booming laugh mm. seems to come from all around you. So I see that hasn't been fixed. We were listening to some bonus dialogue we found on a scroll there, but as I progressed, f I found it a two mid side of a crypt, the perfect oh. hiding place. <laughs> I am coming, my dark master. He's gonna resurrect the dragon lord. And oh my god. The opposite of what we want. We gotta get in there. I agree. Polymorph is out. Skeleton, then... And I will take my free cast of magic missile, please. Actually, I don't think it worked. Let me just cast it there. We'll push in. But we were listening to one of those scrolls kind of set off to the side. And we just happen to gra to pass over an area where dialogue starts for the main quest line. So they don't delay that dialogue. They just interrupt that piece of side content you were listening to. And I don't think there's a way to get it back. It's just kind of unfortunate. Probably morph that guy on the stairs. Oh, it didn't work. Perfect. The waystone glows. You feel its magic within your chest, within your mind, within your soul. It asks a question. That is a pretty cool door. Who are you? I am a fate maker. You have answered smartly, baby! The carbon door to the Dragon Lord's tomb crumbles! Woo! The resurrection ritual has begun! Okay. I actually didn't want to jump down. I was going to read my spell first. <laughs> oh, boss fight! I got a special figurine for this guy. One second. Rising before you is one of the Dragon Lord's most loyal undead soldiers. It's Rivula. Roll for initiative! <laughs> I love these little character moments in Borderlands normally, and seeing them inside a book is really, really cool. Before we start, I'm just going to read my thing and make sure I understand it. Okay, so I think I get a free spell cast. I still have to manually press the button. However, on this boss, I'm assuming he's going to be immune to polymorph, which means we should get a free spell cast anyway. So let's start off with a grenade. I'm going to try to polymorph him. I don't think it worked, but did I get a free cast? I don't know. I'll, I'll stop focusing on this. We'll just work on getting this boss down. Now, luckily for us, he is extremely frozen between our grenade and our SMG. So he is taking a decent amount of bonus damage, but he's starting to teleport away now. Let me grab some ammo over here. His minions pushing in. We can take them down, no problem. Free spell cast here. Every projectile going towards Ribula. That's beautiful. I'm going to try to poly. Did it work? I don't know. Oh, I am electrocuted by something. Oh, it seems he's getting a little more aggressive with his spell damage. Let's just continue to kite away here, keeping these ads out of our way as well. Good damage, he's down! There's still time! You can seal the Dragon Lord away before he escapes! How do we do that? Hold on. Oh. Let me grab this loot really fast. I don't know if I need any of it yet, but I'm gonna have it. Oh, hey, Dragon Lord! 
Dragon Lord, let's do this. He doesn't take any damage. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, not happening. Come on, the Fate Maker never beats the villain in the first quest. That is true. Still, you're stronger than the ones she sent before. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. We'll meet again, Fate Maker. But for now, I have to go pay an old shiny friend a visit. See you around the neighborhood. Damn it, he got away? We gotta track him down. I want that big bad boss kind of loot. We did get a new shield and a new grenade, and then another new shield as well. Fantastic. But I think our episode will be ending very soon. Thank you guys for joining me today. We'll get into the rhythm a little bit more as we progress. I feel like I was trying not to talk over a lot of dialogue. This was a very dialogue heavy entrance. This is one of the scrolls we found earlier that we interrupted. The Fate Maker's journey begins as so many do, with a heart full of fire and dreams of dragons and magic. It will end only one way, with the ultimate defeat of all evil. Despite your heroic efforts, the Dragon Lord has escaped! Wait a minute. Did you hear what he said? Shiny? Friend? Neighborhood? I know where he's headed. He's after Queen Butt Stallion! To warn Queen Butt Stallion of the Dragon Lord's escape, you must travel far across the Wonderlands to the capital city of Brightful. Decisions, decisions. And we will adventure out on our way to Brighthoof in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back again tomorrow with the next episode, and we'll see how our story plays out here. 